Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 7. This is the semifinals, and remember it's a recap. If you want to watch the whole episode, go to Prime Video. Let's get started. And thank you for leaving me thumbs up and subscribing. It's most helpful to me and very motivating. So let's look at our first semifinalist up. I really liked her, and this is her entry photo, which... I mean painting, which I really, really liked. Um, you know, slightly different and has a, just a pleasing kind of tone to it. Uh, the painting that she won her episode with, I felt like I, it was a very sad painting. <laughs> just didn't like the palette tremendously. So let's take a look at that one. Yeah, there it is. The co colors kind of got muddled and all that, and it's kind of flat and you know, it's it's fine. It just it just didn't really excite me to the extent that the judges were excited, which is often the case. And so, um, let's see, I can't remember how many semifinalists we have. I think it's six, but we also have something called a wild card, which I'll bring up in a, a few minutes when that comes up. So here we can see the entry that the artist made, which is on the left, where they had unlimited time, and then the painting that they did in four hours that won their episode. So there's definitely a consistent style there. Here's the next one, and this is a watercolor, so I, sh I should be champion championing it. But I do find that it's kind of um, spotty and leaves a lot of white of the paper, although I'm a great believer in leaving some white of the paper white. It just looks, um, it doesn't have a lot of impact, certainly not from far away. And remember, the commission is gonna be on a gallery wall, so that's important. I really love this, but it's so unfinished. And I have to, I would say that was probably because of the day, because one thing that happens with watercolor is it you, you can't apply another layer until something dries. And if you're in a wet environment, it's never going to dry. But his thing seems to be kind of leaving a lot of unfinished canvas. I was really excited about this piece when it came up as the person's entry. It's a cityscape, but it has movement. And look at the depth. There's so much depth in that painting and a lot of warm playing against cool. I just think it's kind of a masterful uh, thing. Lots of lost and found edges. It kind of ticks all the boxes for me. And this is the painting that he did that won his episode. I thought this was a really good effort too. I really like that the bell tower goes off the top. I think that's so important so you don't have the subject surrounded by, you know, islands surrounded by oceans, I always say. I think it's anchored in nicely. And um, the weather did change over the day, so they captured the sun. This one was inexplicable to me that it got um, entered into the um, competition. It's, it's extremely flat, extremely stylistic, um, but very well designed. So I, I also happen to like swimming pool paintings. And, but uh, what I didn't like was the entry that she did on that day, four hours for the painting on the right, which still looks like an underpainting to me. I don't know why they selected this painting. It was somewhat historic, though, because it was the first time they ever picked two artists to go forward. And so this was the first one from that episode. Now we're going to look at the second one. This is a much more masterful work. Um, we, you know, we don't see a lot of paintings of interiors on this painting, and there whole, is a whole school of people that do interiors. There's also a school of painting that uh, people do still lifes. So I guess that's included kind of in landscape and category, and, and, and I go for it. I really like it. Now what he did, remember, unlimited time on the left for his entry, and then the one on the right is what he did on the day. And this was the same day that the swimming pool gal uh, painted as well, so I, I didn't get her reference at all to the place, whereas what he did was he did two views. One was looking toward a building, and one was looking out from that building. So there are the two semifinalists from that day. Again, you, you just can't compare these things, you know, apples to oranges, uh, sushi to bacon, I don't know. But uh, I really like the one on the right. There's such good control with the neutrals there. I, there's something really calming about it. Okay, here's the uh, next uh, semifinalist. He works only in black, white, and gray. This was his entry, so he had unlimited time to do this. Uh, it's powerful. Um, I prefer color, but um, so I don't have a lot to say about it, except he certainly showed consistency of style 
And, uh, you know, he's a one of. I don't know many people that do black, white, and gray paintings. Uh, it's probably very popular these days. You know, when you look in Architectural Digest or in some of the magazines, um, for younger people, um, there's a lot of color, but um, for older people, they seem to like more tonal and single colored kinds of paintings uh, for whatever reason. Maybe they're more architectural. That, that remains to be seen. And here's the painting that he did on that day. I kind of think this one is actually more powerful than the one he did um, as his entry, just simply because you can see more energy in the brush strokes which I kind of respond to and, and like. You, you see a play of light going on there. It's, um, like I said, it's a one of, so he, he certainly stands out. Now, I was really excited about this fella because I really, really do like this painting, which is his entry painting. It shows a lot of depth. It's a cityscape. Uh, I, I really like these kinds of paintings that combine buildings with uh, people as well. It, it, a slice of life kind of painting, if you know what I mean. So I, I was really excited about him. So let's look at the painting he did that won his episode. Yeah, it was this one. I really like this one too. The judges didn't like the sand in front creating that diagonal, but I think it's super important. If you put your thumb up and get rid of that diagonal, the painting does not have the same uh, depth and excitement. Now let's talk about the wild card. This is what they call a wild card. What I during every single episode, 50 people have been invited who have entered the program in the past but not gotten in, and only one person is picked from each one of those episodes, and finally, in private, the judges pick one of those people to go forward is what they call the wild card. So this is our wild card who's in the semifinals. Um, I, really, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I mean, she's done a lot of work here. I'm not partial to the pink underneath. It's just... The colors are, are, are just don't sing for me, but I understand what she's doing, and she's on the right track. So that's our field. Now, where they had the semifinals was a place called Felix Stowe Docks. This is a pretty industrial place, uh, so we're not going to see anything pastoral here. So we need the drone shot, because all documentaries these days, not that this is a documentary, I would call it more like reporting or recapping, that's an entry shot. I mean, a drone shot. Got to have the drone. And th there you can see the pods on the beach where they have some uh, protection from wind and rain because the weather often has changed during these episodes from being a sunny day to being gray or the other way around. So they're very exposed here and they're almost being channeled into a certain view. And so we have to see how creative they'll be with that. And that's what they're looking at. Oh boy. Yeah, um, that, that is a challenge, but I, I would actually like to try that challenge. I might do a screenshot and try my own. I want to see, see how I would solve that problem. That's kind of fun. Now, four hours in, the judging begins, which means it hasn't actually been four hours. It's been four hours, and we can see all the paintings lined up there that they did today. And you can see just by the light, it's getting to be near the end of the day, maybe around five o'clock or something. Um, although it is summer light. So um, <laughs> I love the sandbags on the easels to keep them in place. Yeah, you got to do that or you can have tippy easels. All right, here's our watercolorist who, who really doesn't finish things. So for me, this is extremely incomplete. So I don't know how, how to judge this in any way. I love where he's going. I, I'm just not sure why he isn't more compelled to finish. Uh, so it's it's spare, but that's his thing. Now let's look close up and we can really enjoy the line work that he does when it comes to his drawing. Very, very fluid. You only get that kind of fluid line when you've been drawing for a long time. You know, the rest of us, uh, I would include myself in the ca category. I don't really have lyrical line. I have more, uh, I want, don't want to say scratches necessarily, but uh, the fluidity of what's happening here is, is, is really, really beautiful. Uh, I don't know that it shows up from very far away, um, which is a factor because, as I said earlier, the final uh, prize is a commission of 10,000 pounds to do a painting in a gallery. Let's see the next one. This is impactful. Um, not, not a whole lot of depth. Lots of emphasis on greens. I sure wish there had been some oranges thrown in there. 
um, maybe even primed the canvas with a little bit of orange, something that was the complement. It, it kind of reads as tonal, which I have to say, given this contest and, and the competition, uh, that's acceptable, right? Because we have a, a complete black, white, and gray artist coming up. Um, this, so we're going to look a little bit closer at this. Not, not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on here. Um, some fairly bigger brushwork going on, so they aren't working from the elbow down. They're, they're working with their whole arm. I, I don't find this a particularly exciting piece or want to see more of this. Uh, this happens to be the swimming pool gal, uh, so I'm already not a fan. Okay, here's the one. Here's the one. This is the one that I should win, should win everything, <laughs> hands down. To me, this is the winner. And, and um, yeah, if I was painting, I would have done the exact same thing. Gone for a more square format. Look at some of those pops of red that are happening. Gosh, without those pops of red, the whole thing would have been more tonal. This is so carefully designed and so carefully executed. You know, it's a really complicated scene, and they kept everything that they needed, but didn't add everything, and yet there's a lot there. But, um, you know, you can comprehend everything when, as you look at it. Oh, I, just think it's, I just think it's masterful. Look at that. Wow. All that mixing of the little boxes on the cargo ship, that had to be carefully done, so it went with the grays that he had mixed up. That's a lot of mixing. I, I knew from the beginning, when, you know, with his first painting that I suspected he would be the winner, but hashtag Joe is always wrong, so I will not be right. I know it. But I really do love this painting. I hope you do too. Look at the work in the water too. Everything is considered here, but not carefully. Um, you know, you, you don't feel like it's labored. There's something really joyful about it. Oh gosh, it really is, really is a masterful piece. Just beautiful. This is the reason that, that I wanted to become a painter in the first place. It's just fascinating that you can create this illusion on a flat piece of paper. I, 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 it's just magic, isn't it? It's, it's incredible. Now we'll go on to the next one. This one is, um, I'm not sure what to say about it. I sure don't know what that triangle is doing in there. I'm finding that distracting. So in terms of design elements, I'm confused. Ooh, I am very confused. Um, now we'll look at some details, but I don't know that that's going to help my confusion in any way. Let's take a yeah. I don't I don't I don't get it. What was the what was that thing? Huh? Interesting. I don't mind something added as a design element, but it needs to make compositional sense. Uh, that oh maybe it's an umbrella. Oh man, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't work as a shape. It just doesn't work as a shape. When you're looking at a painting and you start asking yourself, what is that What is that, you know, you're trying to resolve it in your head in some way. And abstract shapes are absolutely fine. You don't have to know what everything is, but they kind of have to go. And that arrow, you know, it creates an arrow that just makes your eye go off the page. Oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, now we have a Sophie's Choice because this is gorgeous too. Oh my, oh, oh, love, 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 love. You know, very different than the earlier one that I gushed over, but also there's some similarities. Oh boy, these two are really good painters. I hope they don't pass these two up. Oh, that will break my heart. But my heart has been broken many a time watching this program. That's just beautiful. It doesn't have the same clarity of color as the first one that, that I really, really liked, but you know, it also has incredible amounts of movement. You can sort of, oh, imagine that the wind is there. Imagine a sense of place. I just, ooh, that just, I, wow, I'm a big fan. Here's a close-up. Yeah, and we'll pull away again. Just a beautiful job. Wow. All right, so let's see. Our, we have another, I think we have a few more contestants coming up, amazingly. Yeah, oh, this one. Yeah, this one surprised me. I actually like this painting. I'm not saying I would advance them, but I do like this painting. I love simplicity. One of my favorite watercolorists is a very similar to this in terms of absolute simplicity, and I, I love his work. What surprised me about this, oh, we'll come in f further. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. Um, not sure what takes four hours when someone is doing something like this, which 
really doesn't matter. Everything is carefully considered. You know, they didn't want to get involved with that structure out in the out in the ocean, and so they went this way instead. I think it really works. I just don't know how you compare it to the other ones. And just so you know ahead of time, we'll find out later, but this is the artist that had worked only in black, white, and gray before. So he stepped outside of his comfort zone, and he can uh, be a colorist with incredible strength when it comes to his value shapes. Really, really beautiful. Even that log in the, in the sand there, you know, it's it's really important. Everything is really important. Ah, here's our wild card. Yeah, the pink pink and, and kind of the composition becomes a little bit chaotic for me. I'm not sure. Um, but it's also somewhat delightful. I don't really have a problem with it. I just don't know how to compare it to some of the other ones that came before. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I... I don't... It... it um, I have to pretend that I like the colors. If I like the colors, would I feel differently about yeah, it? Yeah, how do you feel about those colors? There's something really enjoyable about it, but also something that isn't isn't quite cohesive for me. Not that it has to be. I'm a little... I'm, you know, I'm, it, we're at a disadvantage because we didn't get to see... Oh, yeah, we did see her prior work. So it's consistent with what she's done before. Well, anyway, um, now let's take a look at... That's the, oh, this is the last entry. Wow. Wow, no ambiguity there. That's very interesting. Huh. Boy, we have some really strong contenders. I don't know what the judges are going to do. I know which three I would pick, but uh, I'm sure they won't pick the three I pick. Boy, I think this is such a strong painting. I have a sense they're going to pass it over. You know, sometimes it's just, sometimes there's a painting that's so complete or so, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, nothing they can criticize, therefore they have nothing to talk about, maybe? I'm not sure. All right, so yes, yeah, the sun is kind of going down, we have our last look at all the semifinalists lined up, and only oh, we're all so good. Uh, you know, it's going to be a really exciting finals, although I hate that there's a finals because there's so many good painters. But we are lucky because we get to see them. Now let's look at the final judging. Remember, in the final judging, they've had such a long day, an exhausting day. They've had to travel. They've had the elements. You can see how long a day it is that the sun is getting ready to go down. Only three will go forward into the semifinals. Now the semifinals will also have, they will do a four hour painting like they did today on a site that's chosen by the judges and then they'll also have a commission piece that they can do of a landscape which will probably be a landscape of their choosing. I think that's what they've done in the past. So we will have three different artists and six different paintings to look at. So let's see who our winners are. Dun, 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 dun. Oh boy, this could be interesting. Let's see. All right, the first one up. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh, okay. I am so disappointed. Hi. Bah. Ah, I have no words. And I'm sorry if you think I'm harsh. I have no words. Where is this one? Yay. I want this one to go all the way. Oh, they left sun. Really good paintings. I I have to let it go. I have to let it go in real time, which is I'm letting it go right now. Shake out my hands, so we'll let it be. And here's our monochromatic painter. I do want to see more from him. They're just other painters I like better. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time at the finals. Okay, bye-bye.